welcome uh, to Encrypted Credentials in Rails 5.2, Secrets to Success. All right, so this is a sponsored talk uh, by Engineard. Um, Engineard is everything you need to deploy your Rails app in production. Uh, we've been around for 10 years. Um, we provide 24-7 support. Uh, we provide DBA support. Um, you, know, you don't have to wait three months uh, for your app to fail. We could proactively help you with that. Um, you also get AWS support th through us. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, come talk to me. Come to the engine. Uh, come talk to the engineer team, and we'll have a booth uh, tomorrow and on Thursday. My name is Christopher Rigor. I'm the tech evangelist at Engineer, and you could find me on Twitter at Krieger. So who here has already used credentials on uh, Rails 5.2? Okay, we have a few. Uh, that's, I mean, that's more than what I expected. You know, uh, if everyone's using Rails 5.2 and credentials, then you know uh, we don't need to have this talk. Uh, but yeah, so that's good. How about uh, encrypted secrets on Rails 5.1? Okay, we have two. Uh, so the good news is you're encrypting your data. Uh, the bad news is it's already deprecated. <laughs> so from 5.1 to 5.2, they introduced encrypted secrets, then deprecated it. Uh, you could still use it. Um, I'm not sure when they'll remove it, uh, Rails 6, uh, but yeah. Um, and then secrets, uh, that YAML, uh, Rails 4.1 and up, um, I, I guess uh, most of you, you know, are you know, using that. Um, I see some people who didn't raise their hands are using Rails 3, 2, yeah, 1. <laughs> we have one guy over there. Um, so, yeah, so let's take a look at what secrets uh, that YAML are. Um, so every time you create a new Rails application, you get this. Um, your secrets are grouped per environment, right? You have development, test, and production. So you would see on development and test, the secret key base are hard-coded, right? But in production, you read that from from uh, an environment variable. So why do we do that? Because you could commit this file to your repository. So that's why you don't want to put any credentials on that file because you know, everyone who has access to your repo would see it. Um, so the problem here is, well, secret key base, if you're only using it for development, it's fine if some people would see it. But if you have, let's say, AWS keys, even if you're using it just for development, you don't want other people to access it, right? So what you do is keep on using environment variables, and before you know it, you have a lot of environment variables on on this file, which is you know we could work around that. Like we, that's what a lot of people have been using, but you just have to remember to set your environment variables and to do it securely. Um, you know, and there are some gems that that help with that, uh, but you know we want to move to something uh, better. Right. So on Rails 5.1, it is deprecated, but we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, this is the first time that Rails um, is encrypting the data, um, or is helping you uh, encrypt your data. Right. So before you could use some gems, but now uh, you know you could use it, uh, you know, out of the box. So when you want to use encrypted secrets, um, you run secrets setup, and uh, that would create a key on your, um, on, your, on, on, the, on your application, and then it would also create you know, the secrets.yaml.enc. Um, that one, you could commit to the repo, but the key, um, you don't have, or you shouldn't, you shouldn't uh, put that in your repo, uh, because if you have the key and the encrypted file, then you know, anyone could just decrypt it. So this is what, um, so when you edit the, when you edit your credentials, you actually use secrets edit, a command. Uh, you won't be able to just open the file and then edit it yourself. What this command does is decrypt your data, put it into a temporary file, and then open your text editor. That's why you have to set uh, the variable editor there if you haven't. And you would see something like this, and then the comment is 
see secrets.yaml for tips on generating suitable keys. So you would see here that it's still grouped per environment. Uh, you have the production environment and you have the key, uh, external API key. So the problem here is you're using secrets.yaml for some credentials, but you know they're not encrypted. Then you have encrypted secrets, which are encrypted. So you have two different files. One is encrypted, one is not. It gets confusing, right? So that's why um, even though it was introduced just recently, it was uh, already deprecated. So um, this is just a look at, that, at the encrypted files. So you know, that's why you could commit this to your repository because you know, no one would get your data from here. Uh, if you don't have your key, this would just be, you know, um, you won't be able to, you know, get the data from here. You won't understand it, right? So instead of using secrets and encrypted secrets, uh, they changed the name to credentials, right? So credentials is used on Rails 5.2. Um, you get a key. Uh, named master.t, or you could set it with an environment variable Rails master key. So I named this title encrypted credentials, which kind of suggests that there's an un unencrypted credentials, which is wrong. Uh, so we just use credentials, uh, and they're always encrypted. So um, when using it, uh, you, similar to Rails 5.1 encrypted secrets, you run credentials edit. So you would see here that you didn't write, you know, you didn't run any setup code because if you create a new Rails 5.2 application, you would automatically get a key. So, but if you're upgrading, uh, you could also run a setup command that would generate the key uh, for you. So now if you run this, uh, you would get something like this. So what has changed here? Right, uh, you would see here that it's not group per environment anymore. Uh, it, you know, there's no development or production, uh, and then your secret key base automatically gets uh, added to it. Right, so there's no separate uh, secrets.yaml. It doesn't get generated anymore on Rails 5.2, um, and and yeah, you you you're supposed to use this only in production for development or staging. Um, We'll talk about that uh, towards the end of the talk. So uh, now I, wanna, I want to uh, do some demo on how it's uh, done, uh, how to use credentials. Uh, okay. Uh, so um, can everyone see that? Okay. Uh, so now I'm creating a, a new application, uh, and it finished quickly. Um, so uh, we're starting from a brand new Rails uh, 5.2 application, and if you search for uh, master.key, you would see that Rails automatically uh, creates that uh, file over there. So uh, let's see the... And let's generate a controller that we'll use later. All right. Um, yep. And the welcome action. Uh, so we'd see here it's you know it's a standard generator with create files, and now we would edit the credentials. So the master key has been created automatically. Now we just want to um, you know to use those credentials. So let's set our editor, um, and then Rails credentials. Edit. it, All right? So, um, okay. So, uh, the AWS is actually um, commented out. So we'll un uncomment that, and then I heard DHH doesn't like the foo variable, so we'll put that in. Um, all right, and save it. Um, okay, so it says here, new credentials encrypted and saved. So once you save your, on your text editor, it would encrypt those credentials and save it, right? So if you check, for example, for your credentials.yaml.enc, 
that is encrypted, right? So your unencrypted credentials, the one that you saw earlier, won't be saved on your application. Okay. Oops. Okay. Um, so let's go to. Well, let's ignore that. Let's go to our application. Um, so this is our application. Uh, let's view the routes. So I'm using a Mac Vim on my local machine. Root pages, welcome. Just so that you know we see that. And then let's edit the welcome action, uh, the welcome view. So like hello, RailsCon. And then let's. Probably the most controversial in this talk, we'll use inline CSS style, font size, RTX. Yeah, yeah I miss doing this. <laughs> so, foo is how do we access our credentials? So, you access it with Rails application, that credentials, that foo, and that's it. You could access your credentials with that. Um, and then, AWS access key ID is uh, Rails that application that credentials that AWS and since it's nested um, on you know our YAML file is nested uh, this becomes a hash so we'll uh, access the we'll use the access key ID key right and then close that. Yeah, thank you. I uh, always make that mistake. Uh, okay. I closed my HTML tag. Uh, uh, and then let's run right, Rails server. Okay. It's running. Let's go to the app. Oops. That's actually the demo. Right. Ah, I forgot the forgot the new line, but yeah, foo is bar, AWS access key ID is one, two, three, right? So that's, that's how you access the credentials from, your, uh, from the YAML. So, right, what, what did we learn here, right? Well, first, don't use inline CSS and don't display your credentials on your view, right? So this is just a demo, like, don't, don't go and say, well, you know, just display your credentials so we could see it, right? Um, there's actually a way to display, um, the credentials, uh, which is um, Rails credentials show, right? So, right, you could uh, do that. Um, so, um, so that's the demo for using the simple, you know, encrypt, uh, credentials, right? Um, if you've noticed, I run Rails new, I run Rails credentials show. Um, that's actually not on my laptop. If you could see, I, I put their dev spaces. This is actually one of the tools that we're looking at, um, that we're trying at Engine Yard, which is you know, running your Rails application on a remote server, right? Which is nothing new, right? I mean, people do it. If I'm on the conference Wi-Fi um, and I, you know, I attempted to start from, Rails, uh, from a new Rails application, it connected to rubygems.org and all that. Um, but it's you know it's on a remote server somewhere, so that's why I, you know I could do that. But what's new with Dev Spaces that we're trying, if you've noticed, I used my local IDE. So one of the problems with just using the server is, well, I have to use Vim or I don't know. I just use Vim when I'm SSH to a server. But here I'm using my local IDE, which is also Mac Vim, but you know it has my shortcuts. I can keep in using it. So I didn't have to install Ruby or Rails or run or connect to rubygems.org for my machine. Uh, you know, it, it does that from the remote server, but then I could continue using my local IDE. So cloud IDEs were, you know, were, were a fad before, but here, you know, I'll use this because you know, I like my IDE, I like my customizations. If you're using uh, Visual Studio Code, just keep on using that. Sublime, Atom, uh, you, know, you could uh, continue using that. So, yeah, so yeah, uh, if you want to learn more about dev spaces, you know, we could approach us at the booth. 
uh, you know, it's great for developers, especially for me when I'm traveling uh, with, you know, when the Wi-Fi is not great. Um, yeah. So the next part of the demo is, uh, let me see, is using the encryption that Rails uses um, with on your on your own code, right? So Rails didn't just say here use this for credentials. It exposed the API, right, so that you could use it on your own app. So that you know if you want to use encryption, you don't have to rewrite things. Uh, you know you could just use whatever it's using. So on a Rails console, um, you could see, for example, that the credentials this returns. Um, you know, encrypted configuration. So this is the new class that Rails added and exposed for you, right? So you could use encrypted configuration. But instead of using that, uh, you know, let's just use foo again. Instead of using credentials, you actually use Rails that application that encrypted, right? And now I want to specify the file that I want. So I'm not using the credentials that YAML, that ENC, that Rails uses. I want to encrypt something else. So I'm going to specify, you know, um, let's say RailsConf.enc, right? Now I could, uh, you know, write my code, uh, my message, right? Hello, RailsConf, right? And if you read it, you know, you could see it back. Um, and that's how you create your, um, you know, create an, another encrypted file. So if you go here, uh, you could see that you have RailsConf ENC, right? So again, it's encrypted. It's similar to credentials that YAML that ENC. Um, you know, you can't see it. Uh, you need to run. Uh, you could use it on, from your app to decrypt it, or you could also use it, uh, use a command to to uh, to decrypt it. Uh, which I'll show in a bit. Um, we didn't specify any key here, right? So what key did it use? It reused the master.key that Rails already created. So if that's something that you don't want to do uh, because you want you know, to use a separate key for a different purpose, you could do that as well and uh, Rails support that as well. So if you, um, so we want to use a new key, right? So we generate the key first, encrypted configuration, generate key, right? So now you get um, this new key that you could use, right? Uh, it's just a hex of uh, size uh, 32 uh, because you need 16 bytes for the key. So like the, the hex, the string is of length 32 that uh, generate key uses. Right, so you didn't have to do this earlier because uh, you know Rails already generates it for us, right? But so let's insert here. Let's call it the top secret key, right? So I'm going to save that, and now this I'll use this key to encrypt my data, you know, so that I don't I don't want to reuse uh, my master key, right? So okay secret, right? So, you know, it's on my dev space now. I created it on my local machine on MacVim, and then it's now on dev space, right? So I could now do bar rails that application that encrypted um, config top secret enc. Now I could specify the key, right? So instead of using the master.key file, it would, you know, I could specify any key that I want. So I named it config tab secret key, right? There you go. Uh, then you could write, you know, this is a top secret message, right? So earlier I told you I could, you know, I could edit that as well. So instead of using credentials to edit, uh, Rails gives us um, encrypted edit, right? So you specify Top secret that ENC, and then you could you you pass the key uh, that you want to use uh, because you know you use a different key. So top secret uh, key, right? 
and you know you get an editor again uh, with the message that you so I, I added the message on my Rails console, edited it from the command line. Uh, then you know you could edit this and say, you know, and then uh, you could actually do encrypted show, uh, which is similar to credentials show, and it would just well you don't need the editor variable there, but you know that's just you know you get the message. You you see your uh, encrypted message again. So. Um, yeah, that is the demo for encrypted credentials. Okay, so what does encrypted configuration use, right? So uh, encrypted configuration is the new class that Rails uses, but it actually uses message encryptor. So if you've heard of this, this was actually introduced in Rails 4.1, uh, which is used for encrypting data on your cookies. So it's, you know, Rails exposed a new class, but under, you know, Inside it, it, re it reuses what we've already been using. So that's one good thing about Rails. Uh, you know, it's, you know, you're rebuilding things on top of what already works for us, right? So now on to, you know, what does credentials use? I mean, what type of encryption do we use? The cipher that Rails uses is AES, uh, which is a symmetric cipher. We won't go into details about, you know, how it works. Uh, as DHH said, right, we, we don't need to know these things, right? We, you know, we, we, we just let someone else handle it, right? So um, AES is um, a, a symmetric cipher could have, or could be a stream or block cipher. Those are the two types of ciphers. A stream, um, well, let me just, So a stream cipher uh, encrypt your bits individually, uh, whereas a block cipher, it divides your data into blocks and then encrypt uh, those blocks uh, to, to, to encrypt the whole data, right? So AES is a block cipher, right? So, but before we talk further about AES, you know, not the internal, you know, uh, details, but before we talk about that, we, let's talk about what came before AES, which is uh, DES or data encryption standard, right? So this was released in 1977 by NIST, uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology, uh, which is named differently back then. You know, so this is the agency that I think provides uh, guidelines on passwords and, and, and even for cryptography, right? So it was developed by IBM uh, with the help of NSA, right? So the intelligence agency. So there was a concern, right, back then that, you know, the NSA could has a backdoor on on DES, right? Because um, they help building, you know, the, the cipher. So uh, IBM described or NIC described, you know, the describe how the algorithm works, how DES works. But some parts of it weren't really, you know, weren't really um, described fully or weren't really explained um, in uh, specifically. Um, uh, uh, specifically, uh, DES and other block ciphers use substitution boxes, right? So these are, it, DES use, uh, uses eight of these S boxes, right? You can see numbers there, and they're hard-coded. These are the specific numbers that DES use, and they didn't explain why they chose these numbers, right? So what would people think, right? Like, these are the numbers that, D, that NSA used to, you know, for a backdoor to, to DES, right? They, they could decrypt the data without your key, right? So in 1990, so remember this was released in the 70s. Uh, in 1990, uh, two researchers uh, released a paper on an attack called uh, differential cryptanalysis attack. Uh, this attacks um, the block ciphers, including DES. So at this point, there are other block ciphers aside from DES, right? So. I've, but they made a note that these, that these script analysis attacks weren't really that effective with DES, right? So that's an interesting note. So one of the creators of DES said, well, finally, you know about script analysis attacks. So apparently in the 1970s, IBM and or NSA already know about script analysis attacks, and that's why they chose these numbers specifically 
to protect against those attacks, right? But they couldn't say what those numbers are for because they wanted to keep it secret, right? The US government wants it to be an advantage, right? They could decrypt some data, but you know, not tell, you know, not tell the public on, on, that they know about this. But apparently, you know, this is the height of the Cold War in the 70s, but apparently the Russians also know about these attacks, right? So, yeah. In 1997, 98, DES is being attacked, right? So, you know, it held up in, the in 1990, but 97, 98 is already being attacked. You get powerful hardware, uh, you know, computers were being built specifically to attack DES, and, what, and it's not the cryptanalysis attacks, so what, what was the problem? They used a small key space. They used 56 bits, uh, which is small, uh, which was actually a concern in the 70s. IBM wanted 128, uh, but guess who wanted 56 bits, right? So the NSA wanted to use 56 bits. So NISC said, well, right, we want a new cipher that would replace DES. So, but instead of doing it the way we did with DES, which is, you know, it was developed by IBM, not in the open, you know, we, we want to ask for submissions, right? So uh, 15 submissions, right? Uh, there were 15 submissions and uh, that was, um, and we had five finalists in 1999. Uh, and it's an open process. It's very different from the way that DES was developed, right? So, and in 2000, uh, the Rheindel um, cipher, if you've heard of it, uh, you know, it's a Belgian cipher. It was chosen as the AES cipher. So it was renamed to AES. So that's how we came with AES. So from uh, DES, which isn't recommended anymore, but by, uh, NIST, uh, we now have uh, AES, the Advanced Encryption Standard. So the standard here is because, you know, the U.S. government, NIST, right, the agency, you know, said that this is a standard that people would use. But actually, AES is used pretty much, it's pretty much actually the standard, right? A lot of, a lot of um, applications use it, right? So um, it's, you know, it's, um, it's, and the testament to that is um, NSA actually allows their data to be encrypted by using AES. So before that, they used their own ciphers, right? Uh, their proprietary ciphers. But with AES, they said, well, it's good. You know, it's good enough for NSA. You know, it's good enough for our Rails applications. So uh, 128 is the bit key size, right? 128 bits. Um, just a note about you know, the, the key sizes, right? Uh, you, you'd hear that the bigger keys, right, is better. Uh, like if you're using SSH keys and you create, you know, an R, uh, and you use RSA, you would, you know, the, I think right now the recommendation is to use 2048 bits, right? But here we only use 128 bits because um, the key space only matters if that is the, the it's the brute force attacks is the most, you know, it's, 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 the, it's the attacks that people use. If it's the brute force attacks, uh, and it's, so RSA is different from um, AES, that's why the keys, the keys could be smaller. So in fact, with AES, you could only choose uh, 128, 192, and 256 bits, right? So th those are the only three options. And 128 is, uh, you know, is good enough. It would take decades. Uh, for, you know, for, for AES to be broken, right? So then GCM, Galois counter mode, it's the mode of operation. Since we're encrypting by blocks, then that's, you know, there's, there's a way to, like, to encrypt those. So GCM is the recommendation and that's what we're using. So, yeah, AES-120 GCM, this is on the actual Rails code base, right? This is what we're using. But if you're using something else, or if you want to use something else, then you could do that as well. You could just change the cipher and your code would still work, right? So should I use credentials, right? Should you use credentials? Um, if, you have, if, you haven't if you haven't been encrypting your data, then yes, you should use credentials, right? Uh, but if you have 
something else. Like if, if you're already doing something, if you already have um, policies in place to encrypt per environment, and then you know you don't want to mix them, uh, like to mix your staging and your um, production keys, uh, because you know then all your developers would need access to that key, if it, or in development, right? If, if they need that key, then you know you're exposing your credentials to uh, probably unnecessarily to a lot of people. Um, so, you know, check what you are using now and see if this is better or, or not, right? So, but definitely if you're not encrypting your credentials yet, that it's good to use uh, these new features. So what are the alternatives, right? Uh, EJSON is from uh, Shopify. Um, it uses JSON though. Uh, they have a supposedly a replacement for that, which is ECFG. Uh, you know, I researched that, you know, I included it on my slides, and then, you know, two days ago, I checked the repo, and then it says abandoned, right? So I was like, <laughs> um, so, um, you know, you could check eJSON. Uh, it's, I'm not sure how tight it is with Rails, but it has some good features, like uh, it's not using one key, like every developer can have his own public key. Um, so they are using a symmetric encryption, right? You have a public and private keys. So, you know, check that out. Secrets, I believe, is the inspiration for the credentials feature. So it's not more as an alternative as, you know, what, you know, what prior gems were out there. And then finally, I added this pull request. This is the pull request where that, that merged, um, where, where credentials feature was merged. And until now, it's still open because people have been saying, we need to use credentials on development, on staging, on test, right? And you only told us that we could use cred uh, the credentials feature in production, right? So people have been replying, right? And it's very active, like last I checked, you know, like maybe the past few days, you know, there has been a reply. Uh, so, we, there is no answer right now from Rails Core on how to handle, um, you know, per environment credentials. The techno the code is there. You could use, you know, when I when I specified a different key and a and a, a different file, it's there. But then each and every one of the applications that use staging credentials would have to use those, you know, those code, and you know, it doesn't. So it's 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 not yet over, right? Like, uh, if if I, I I think there would be more um, features that will be added soon. Some people have released gems uh, to tackle this, uh, and I think DHH also, you know, likes you know if you want your idea to be used, then put it on a gem and let's see how people would use it. Um, so that's the current state right now. Um, I actually bumped into one of the Rails Core team member, and he said he's going to push something today before my talk, but I don't think he did. So, uh, as of now, yeah, you could use credentials, but yeah, I mean, you you check on the status as well of uh, you know of what's coming uh, in you know in the next few versions. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much for listening. And yeah, I think we have time for. Questions?